All right, welcome and bear with me while I process. You can see behind me a bunch of packing material, long rectangular box, and that means that I took something off of my wish list that had been on it for quite some time, and I have to thank Highland Broadsword for giving me the nudge to do so. In my short experience with HEMA, I've really come to love single-handed cut and thrust swords, and basket hilts are, yes, among my favorites. Highland Broadsword, highly recommended. The Hanway Backsword, and it was already on my list, but we're talking about the original version with the bright polished steel blade, the bright stainless basket, red liner. It's been out of stock for a long time. But Sword Buyer's Guide recently got in a batch of these antiqued versions. So you have this antique blade, and I will make some comparisons to my Hanway Cromwell. Black and guard, different liner, and I think I am really going to love it. Okay, I just used going to in future tense. I feel like I need to stop the video, at least in terms of my perspective, because I just I don't feel like I can continue this evaluation comfortably until I deal with a few things. What am I talking about? Well, first of all, if you refer back to the video I did on the cold steel broadsword, I, just, I hate these tassels. I referred to them in that video as a Muppet wig. Okay, if I'm grabbing the sword this way and gravity's helping keep it out of my way, it's no problem, but that's usually not the orientation the sword's going to be in when I grab it, right? It's going to be more like this. Gravity is probably going to put all these random strings right in the way of my grip, and I'm dragging them into the basket with me. That's really annoying. If I was wearing a glove, it might not bother me so much, but I tend to pick up a sword to just grab a sword and train with a sword, most of the time without gloves on. Well, speaking of gloves, all right. Original version, as I said, had a red liner that a lot of people complained about the fit and quality of. I was thinking brown liner, ooh, maybe I'm getting some nice leather. No, it's pleather, and as you can see, it's got a white sort of a fleece lining. And you can see, probably just like the red liner that everybody complained about, it doesn't really fit the basket very well at all. It's all bunched in here, like it's a couple of sizes too big. Because of that, I don't have very big hands. Shoving my hand in here, there's not a lot of clearance at all. I couldn't imagine getting my hand in here if it was any bigger, or if I was wearing a glove. And as I'm doing so, all these bunchy bits keep grabbing my hand when I put it in there. And yeah, that's, it just feels like somebody stuck a bunch of extra socks in the basket at random. Um, it's just annoying. So tassel, liner, I feel like they have to go before I can give this sword, well, any further evaluation and not be just distracted beyond reason. So let me try to disassemble it, deal with that. I'll take some pictures and to be continued. All right, different day, different shirt. What have I done so far? Well, removed the Muppet wig, removed really small arming cap, all right, no, we're, not, we're not going there. It's too distracting. But what did I replace it with? And yes, I did have to replace it with something. Once I removed the liner, it did result in a lot of sloppiness between the grip and the basket. So I put in this temporary kind of natural leather, really thick partial liner. And this is where I, I kind of like some feedback from you guys. Went with a natural leather piece, well, one because it was handy, but also it matched the original. <sighs> should I go with this or should I go with something red or black? Let me know in the comments, and this might not be the, the final shape. This is just kind of a minimalist, again, partial liner to do the job and fill that space, and also keep myself from snagging my, my fingers on the basket as I manipulate it. So it does, it does serve a purpose. Speaking of liner, Another place I had to add something down here at the bottom, 
kind of a wedge-shaped leather washer I had to put in, and that was not where the tassel was. The tassel was beneath this dome pommel. Now, put up some pictures. This is a, a sleeve nut, and then this is a solid cast piece. So we'll talk about how that affects weight and balance. But then, if you look at the tang, where it terminates finally down into the, the threaded section, it curves this way. And in doing that, the guard is at the bottom, well, the grip is squared off, but the guard is like this, and that leaves a gap, and that gap was there before I removed any parts. It was kind of covered up a bit by the liner, so this build was really relying on that, that poofy, squishy, bunchy liner to cover up a couple of flaws. So I don't know what I'm going to do with liners and anything like that. But after I got it back together, I took it out and, well, I wanted to see what it could take. So I, I struck it into my pel, thrust it into my pel, struck it against some hard bamboo, thrust into hard bamboo, struck it against some wood, both lumber and branches, thrust it into wood, and yeah, it, it held up really well. And, and we'll talk about that more as we go forward. But, okay may not be done with modifications yet. The edge. Um, the edge. <laughs> the edge. Okay, it's interesting because it feels like it should be sharp. And it's a nice taper down. Now the first quarter of the blade is definitely blunt. The false edge is definitely blunt. There's about a millimeter of blunt on that. But the rest of it looks like it tapers down to a pretty nice edge. It will cut into hard targets like wood and hard bamboo and such. But when it comes to things like paper and cardboard, yeah, it's the, the, I'm going to have to do something about that. But let's talk about specs, handling, and, well, the rest of the build. Okay, let's talk about the specs and the build, and I will make some comparisons to my Hanway Cromwell, which is similar in many ways, but some, some interesting differences. And yes, I'll be looking down at my notes so I can give you the metric as well as the Imperial. Now, down here on the friendly end, there's a surprising amount of longitudinal space, length of grip. Once that liner was out, and just put the top one in here, there's five inches or about 13 centimeters of length in here. So it does give me a couple of choices, at least with my hand size in terms of positioning my hand. We'll talk about how that handles. Speaking of handles, the grip is, well, a bit slimmer than I'm normally comfortable with, but I think it does work on this sword. And we will talk about handling. But a bit simpler than the Cromwell. It does have the same kind of ray skin wrap actually in the same color but the Cromwell had wire Turks head braids top and bottom and more elaborate bolsters. These bolsters are pretty plain and on this one I had to do some smoothing to the Cromwell. Um, the seam on the front and I'll post some pictures so you can get some close-up looks it's definitely visible now without the liner to hide it but it's very very smooth they really did a good job in finishing it to remove any hot spots so that's really impressive stainless steel guard that has been blackened and yeah i, I did try to reshape some of the the angles here so i you know tried taking a mallet to it to see if it would be bendable and it isn't. It held up to impact really well. And like I said, I took this out and, and struck it into some hard targets just, just to see how it handled shock. Did a great job. So let's just talk about the blade. Now it has that same antique finish that the Cromwell has. And I had some issues with the Cromwell's finish. This actually is a bit better done in my mind. Not quite so artificial looking, but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to keep it as is. Now, the Cromwell only had one fuller. This has two, and these fullers are actually nice and crisp and even. The false edge on it is a bit shorter than the Cromwell. Blade, though, is a bit longer, about an inch. So the blade on this sword is 33 and a half inches, so about 85 centimeters. Now, it's slightly 
narrower front to back than the Cromwell, but only by about half a centimeter. So you're talking about the difference between three and a half and three and a quarter centimeters this way. Distal taper, about the same as the Cromwell. Six millimeters down here at the guard tapers down to two. What does that do for blade flex? Now, the Cromwell is 1566, which is a very common choice for Hanway. This is 65 MN. They're both spring steels, similar carbon contents. Don't know which one I would consider superior. I'm, I'm not a metallurgist. Just, just kind of learning myself, but yeah, check out the flex. It's not floppy, not getting a lot of flop on striking hard targets or thrusting into hard targets, but yeah, you'll notice when it flexes, it flexes in, in my head the right way, more towards the tip of the sword. So I really do like that. All right, weight. It is a shave lighter than the Cromwell, even though the Cromwell doesn't seem to have as much steel in the basket. I was kind of surprised that this is three pounds, half an ounce, 1400 grams. Now, for some of you, that might sound pretty heavy. Point of balance is a little bit further forward than the Cromwell at three and a quarter inches, so about eight and a quarter centimeters. But okay, well, how does it feel? How does it move? How does it handle? But wait, I forgot to tell you about the scabbard. Very similar in appearance to the Cromwell. I think what you've got here is a fiberglass tube covered in, again, a natural color of leather, which is another reason why I picked a replacement that was a natural color of leather, but let me know what you think of the color scheme. Blackened shape and throat with less detail, I'm going to admit, than the Cromwell. But one thing this absolutely has over the Cromwell, uh, yeah, the Cromwell is just sitting loose in a tube. This one, they went through the trouble of putting in, well, a leather throat. So that does give, well, some nice retention, takes some of the rattle out of it. Now, this is biased in terms of direction. I tried to stick it in the other way and it didn't quite fit. I suppose I could break it in and make it fit in both ways. But I'm assuming wear is with the hook on the outside, which also puts the seam on the outside, but it's, it's a fairly ornate seam. So I think that might have been what they were going for. Now down at the bottom, there's, there's a bit of rattle, yes, but not nearly as bad as the Cromwell. So I'm definitely going to have to give props to this scabbard. All right, my initial impressions review video on the Hanway Cromwell has been pretty popular, and I do intend to get back to it, especially since I've made a number of modifications to the sword over time to, well, make it suit me better. And I still don't know if this is going to be its final form. But let's see if I can give you a little bit of a closer look at the blade. I did polish out a lot of that artificial pitting and teaking also made the uh, the edge a lot smoother and a, a bit of a better cutter in the process did put a bit of a back edge on it not a super razor sharp one but it's there and then i treated it with some bluing and then polished most of the bluing off to leave it with just this sort of gunmetal gray antiqued finish the other major thing I did to it was, yeah, there were just way too many hot spots for me in the grip. And for me, the grip on that one was just way too narrow to manage the overall weight of the sword, at least, you know, what I'm used to. So I did wrap it in kind of a leather Turk's head. So I gave it kind of a, a thicker, beefier grip. And yeah, it is, it is a very handy sword, very maneuverable and, well, very solid. For its weight, though, for me, it moves really well, and I do very much enjoy training with it. I did also put a leather liner on the top of the basket, because, yes, this pierced guard did serve as a cheese grater. Anytime my nails got close to that basket, yeah, they would, they would snag very painfully. And that just makes the sword in my hands very, very comfortable 
comfortable. And I've been doing a lot of cross training with this, not just studying back sword, broad sword, but doing some side sword training with it. And yes, I'm insane enough in my cross training that I've been playing with a little bit of, can I use it as a small sword? Well, obviously that's a heck of a workout to try to use it as a small sword because of the weight differential. But yes, I, I've been doing that too. All right, well, that's one of the reasons why I was looking to see, well, would I like the Hanway back sword? And the immediate answer, with the few minor modifications I've already done, is, oh yeah, very much so. Its ability to move and respond in the hand is quite nice. For its weight, it's potentially quite a quick blade, and yeah, it just kind of moves and responds very nicely. I said the grip is, I left it still the original ray skin, but no significant hot spots in it. So it's a bit grippier, kind of sandpaper-ish. Probably would feel better if I had some gloves on, but you know, one of the things when I just pick up a sword to do a little quick training, I usually don't take the time to put gloves on. So a lot of my training is without gloves, but um, not bad. My biggest complaint with this particular one I do have a couple other basket hilts. The cold steel back sword, cold steel, Scottish broadsword. Um, yeah, right here, it's colliding with my wrist a little more than I would like. Now, I can correct that a couple different ways. One is by choking down in the grip, kind of sliding my hand down towards the bottom of the basket and making sure I maintain more of a handshake, which is not necessarily the posture you would want with, with a back sword. Now, if I transition to a full hammer grip, it's not a problem. It's transitioning between the two angles where I hit it. It just hits my wrist bone wrong. Would probably feel better with gloves on, or yes, if that squishy liner was still there. So, yeah, I might, I might go back to a full liner of some kind. Don't know yet. Let me know what you think. But, yeah, I, I tend to get it a little bit more when I'm doing lateral movements and transitions uh, compared to staying in kind of the narrow corridor hallway that certain styles prefer. But, yeah, so far so good. I mean, it is a bit on the heavier side, but I do appreciate that for the workout. And balanced so it doesn't really feel it. Um, ooh, one detail I forgot to mention, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it on camera. I thought, I thought, it was corrosion, and then I put better glasses on. My eyes are getting old, but in the fullers on one side, it says Andrea Ferrara, which of course was the sign of a good... <laughs> back sword, broad sword, but I thought it was really interesting that they kind of hid the inscription down there in the fuller. Try to get a good picture of it, but um, yeah, I think it was definitely worth the 400 bucks I paid for it on at Sword Buyer's Guide. I'll put the link down in the description below if it's still in stock. I think it's a good investment, and I think it's going to be a popular one in my training regimen. So let's get our conversation going. Any questions you might have, if you have this sword similar, back swords, broad swords, I will probably do, like I said, a follow-up on the Cromwell, maybe more side-by-side -side comparison. Let me know what you want to see. But until next time, thanks as always for watching, following my journey, tolerating my madness, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, sharing, and I hope to see you back for, well, whatever the next installment is.